Ref Talks Season 3 brought to you by Newville Management and Communications. I know you can, many did it before. The limit is beyond the sky, spread your wings and soar. Ain't nothing to something, give it your best shot. You just need to be the best you, that's all you got. And you will go from nothing to something. Welcome to another inspiring season of Ref Talk television's first revolutionary and spiritually based talk show where we highlight individuals who've gone through challenges but who have overcome. I am your host, Cheryl Newville. Last season, we had many impactful stories, but we couldn't tell them all. However, there is one particular story that we would like to share with you. Take a look. The Lord has given us dominion over principalities and powers and every evil thing of this earth. Today we have with us Kevin Heath. Kevin, welcome to the set of Rev Talk. Yes, blessings. Blessings. Yeah. Share with us a little about your childhood. What was it like? Um, it was good at first, you know, coming to eight to nine years old then you know my mother and my father have separated and it affect me and my two other brothers you know we weren't prepared for that we thought that our life would be all good and nice but unfortunately it never happened that way so um, my father was working away a long distance relationship and I don't think that he spent enough time with us as family, but he was out there trying to make bread that we could survive. And I believe that one is one of the things that happened that caused the relationship not to work out as, as it should. So what happened? You went to live with your mother? We're, well, well I, I didn't went to live with my mother. We were always live, uh, living with family. Mommy. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were always right. a family. So we lived together. Mm -hmm. But when the broken relationship caused my mother to, to move mm -hmm. away from us, basically run away from us. So for a period of time, we haven't seen this mother that we have spent most of our time with from the age of no age to nine. Right. Mm -hmm. Then that person have been missing, and then my father come in place, now taking us from nine year old upward that he don't know much about us. You know what I mean? He didn't spend much time with so us. So how was that though? How was that for you? We, we would have talked to him over the phone back then. In those days, you'd have get your money through the post office. You know, money come from post office and you would go leave from um, St. Elizabeth going to in another parish in St. Elizabeth um, to make phone calls. Oh, in another town? Yes, Where in St. Elizabeth are you from? Um, Whitehall, middle quarters and 36 mile post. And then we would have to go to a place called Black River, New Town. Yes, I know Black yes, mm -hmm. To get the phone call and talk to your daddy. Daddy was working on SS Norway ship. So basically, is 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 right there it start, and it affect our schooling very bad. Yeah. So what happened? Um, a relationship maybe become abusive. You know, I don't know what my mother and my father have why it become so abusive. So what did he do to you? He never do anything to me, you know. It's just him and the mother. My mother fight but it affect us and it affect me because um the nurturing that i should get i didn't get the nurturing you know what i mean the upbringing and to know right from wrong and so i didn't get all of those supplements to carry on in time like now when i have my family to take care of i didn't get that so it caused us to go out on the street so i have been on the street for about seven to nine years, back and front from aunt, aunt house to aunt house. And then you find yourself in Santa Cruz pushing handcart, um, sleeping in the area as well that, that you shouldn't be sleeping for years, eating from the rubbish bin. What yes, do you mean? So you left your father's house uh, we, to we, go on the street? We have to leave because there was no more because my father now, him headpiece now, chipping when you have everything and the broken relationship now, he felt like he lose everything. So you would have to take out everything for us differently, like, you know, move to us certain ways so we have to just run. You know what I mean? So me and my other brother usually sleep on a thing called cellar. In St. Elizabeth, you know, the house would build on the, the hill, mm -hmm. so we have cellars. So we just move from house to house, 
Sleep and then the people sell her? Yeah, man, and we leave out early in the morning and we'd go in town and I start to sell bag juice, bigger. I sell X News. I sell all sorts of things you can name to survive. And it was hard. It was tough. It, it, I thought I would be in Manoro College because I have the potential to, to be there and I know that. I was on that part and the broken relationship caused us not to inherit those things that I believed that I was going to become this Manoro College, this college graduate guy. You know what I mean? So was your mother in touch with you at all? Did you no, get we in never touch get in her? touch, you know. We never get in touch at that time. It took us many years to get in touch and it um, allowed me to hate So her. after the streets, we, what did you do? How long were you on the streets for? About nine years. Um, nine about years. About nine years back and front, you know, but I went to my aunt one year and uh, I usually visit her on uh, uh, Miss Roper in, in Pepper St. Elizabeth. I usually um, visit her on holiday and I decide this time that I'm not going to go back home. And she didn't want me there because, you know, I never have any manners. And the woman that I was coming from, you know, she heard a lot of stuff. And this lady is a Christian principal lady. And to bring in Kevin in the house, I'm going to be trouble. It was trouble still when I was at the house. A bag of trouble. <laughs> but um, I never knew that I would make it. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that, you know, a clean fall cob in St. Elizabeth, clean hog pen. I was the best fall cob and hog pen cleaner. What I do, I do it to the best of my ability. So I, I, I can't believe that I really make it now, but I'm glad that I went through it though. Boy, mm -hmm. well, we're going to talk with you a little more about mm -hmm. the things that you went through in order to get to this place yes, where you are. Yes. So you said you were the best. Everything at that I everything. do at the time. I wanted to do, be the best handcart. My handcart was different. I wanted to be the best um, fall cube cleaner. Pick chicken. I was passionate about everything I do, whether it's wrong or right. I was passionate, you know what I mean? Because one of the things, you know, I want, I want to understand that rejection caused you to do a lot of stuff. So I felt rejected. I was searching for love, you know, searching for that love. So because of the rejection, it caused me to behave a certain way. And what it does, it brings you to suicide. You know what I mean? Put rope around the neck, jump out of the tree, limb come down with you, purpose. You know what I mean? I've been through that. So you went through that? Yes, man. Pause a little bit. Yes. We'll have to talk about that in the next segment. Mm -hmm. This story, Kevin Heath, you will hear a little more about in just a few seconds. And you will go from nothing to something. This segment was brought to you by Dr. Malika Brown, ENT Surgeon, 28 Monroe Road, Kingston. Telephone 632-0943.